What's up everybody, Chana D, your techno dad here, and I got a great video for you today. We're going to check out how to set up your AV receiver for Dolby Atmos, and we're going to get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I got a question uh, from a viewer, I forget the name, so sorry about how to hook up the Atmos speakers and set it up properly in your AVR. Because if you just plug in speakers, you're not necessarily going to get the sound. So what we're going to do is we're going to go upstairs and we're going to check out my Denon. It's the Denon AVR X6300H. It has a total of 11 possible channels. That means it can do a full 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos setup right out of the box without any other amps and that's why i chose it so let's go upstairs all right so here we are with the denon i hit setup we are in the setup menu go down to speakers and we go to manual setup and we go to amp assign now here's how it works on this receiver you have a whole bunch of different options in this first assign mode now i have it set up as 11.1 .1. if you're uh, receiver is 7.1 then you probably just leave it on that this has a whole bunch of different types of configuration this one says assign nine amps to the main zone for surround sound and two amps for zone two for stereo speakers right and then here's the same thing for zone three and then here's assign seven amps to the main zone for surround sound two amps to zone two and two amps to zone three so if you've got want music in three areas that's what you do uh, let's see here 9.1 plus zone three, zone two and three mono. So assign nine amps to the main zone for surround sound and one amp to zone two and one amp to zone three. Let's say you have zone two being like a living room with just one speaker in the ceiling, putting music into that room and zone three is one speaker outside, maybe a rock speaker or something like that. That's how you can set that one up. Uh, by amp, this means that you can connect um, two terminals to one floor standing speaker. If you've seen the back of my speakers, they have two sets of line inputs, one for the high frequency, one for the low frequency. So there's a whole bunch of different, look at this. You got AB, they, the, the graphic is pretty cool. Definitely helps you figure it out. So I'm back to 11.1. .1. Now if we go down to floor, I've got five channels. That's pretty much what I've got. I've got a 5.1.2 setup right now, so that's what we're gonna set up. Um, if you go left and right on this, if you have surround back, you put it on five channel plus surround back. I don't have that, not enough room for that, so let's move on. Okay, so this height speaker is for any kind of ceiling speaker or height speaker that you have installed. This Dolby speaker is for any Dolby Atmos enabled speakers or Dolby Atmos modules, meaning the ceiling firing speakers. So if I turn this on, you see that? You see on the little graphic there, now we've got four, two pairs of Dolby Atmos enabled speakers. Boom. Two channel Dolby Atmos. You see the graphic on the front is front Dolby or surround Dolby. So you can change that back and forth. The graphic on the screen is really very helpful in kind of matching your setup. So you get exactly what it is. Now we go back to none because I don't have any of those. So height speakers, we go to the right and we got four channels. We've got top front and top rear. I don't have that. I actually have top front and that's what I have mine set to. Now you also have options of none and four channel, two channel. Now you do have an option here. If you only have two up on the ceiling, you can go top front because that's kind of where mine are at. They're above the listening area and a little bit forward or a little bit toward the TV. Then we have top middle, so that would be speakers that are just right above the listening area firing down. And we have top rear behind the listening area. Hopefully they have that 30 degree uh, angle that Dolby Atmos is recommending. And then we've got rear height and front height. Okay, so this is how I have mine set up because this is pretty much what mine are like. There are two speakers angled down from the ceiling. That's it for this screen. Let's go back it out. Let's go to speaker config. And here's where you set up your speakers as far as fronts, center, subwoofer, surround, and top front. 
I set all my speakers to small so I can custom make the crossovers. That's definitely something you're gonna wanna do. So go, let's go down into crossovers. And I have the front set to 40. I think they can go down to like 32 or something like that. Center can go down to 50, so I have that at 60. Surround, I believe, is also around 50. And then top front, I have them at 150. They can go down to 120. So that's where I have those at. So I like these settings, they're pretty good. And I haven't had any trouble with them. Like I said, I only have the one subwoofer attached and you'll find that here in the speaker configuration. One, su one speaker, none, that changes the front to large, two speakers, you know. So let's go back to one speaker, let's go back to small, let's make sure that my crossover wasn't reset. No, we got 40, 60, 60, and 150. Perfect. All right, so once you've done your amp assign, once you've done speaker configuration, go ahead and run Odyssey or whatever room calibration your AV receiver has. And then I would go back into manual setup and change crossovers if you like to change or go in and look to see what, what Odyssey or your room configuration has set the speakers to so that you can kind of fine tune and dial it in for your space. All right, so we're gonna take a quick look at the back of the Denon and then we'll get back downstairs to talk about it. work. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the back. Here we got the front right, front left and center. These are these 14 gauge cables down here. Really like them, they're from uh, SVS. Now I've got these two down here. I know it's kind of hard to see with all these HDMIs here, but these two right here, this is surround left, surround right. And then here are my Atmos speakers right here. So as you can see, you've got a lot of terminals. Down here at the bottom, there's actually 11. So here's my 5.1 starting here and going here. 7.1, you'll add speakers here and here. And then these four, one, two, three, four, those are all for Atmos. So this receiver can do 11 channels, a full 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos setup. And that's pretty much it. You know, you just plug these in like normal. I know somebody asked me about making a video about hooking this up. So not really sure what you mean, but I mean, that's pretty much it. Cool. Now, most of these AV receivers are kind of the same. If you're running Odyssey, you kind of have something similar to what I have upstairs in the Denon. If you're running a Denon, I think Morantz, I think that's the same company or the same company owns it and they have Odyssey or the menus look the same or something like that. But even if you have a Yamaha, Sony, um, Pioneer, whatever, you guys are gonna have kind of the same situation. So you need to go and you need to find your amp assign. That's the first thing. Then you need to configure the amplifiers to exactly what's going on. If you have a zone two, are those zone two being rerouted as your Dolby, as your two Dolby Atmos channels? Then you need to set that up that way. Then you need to go in and tell the AVR if they're Dolby Atmos enabled speakers, i.e. ceiling firing speakers, or height speakers that you actually install. And then from there you have to pick, you know, is it the front two, is it the rear two, is it all four? So once you've done that, then go and run Odyssey or whatever room correction you've got going on. Once you've done that and it's gone through all the tests, it's pretty, pretty long and I've done it so many times my wife hates it. And I'm getting some new surround sound speakers to show you guys some other home theater basic stuff and I'm gonna have to run it again and she's gonna be pissed off again, but you know, whatever. Anyway, after you run Odyssey, I would go back in, check out your speaker configuration and make sure everything is set to small, even if you have large floor standing speakers, and then go into crossovers and set the crossovers you want the way you want. If you got little satellites, then probably running everything at 80 or 90 would be good depending on how your satellites are. If you have big floor standing speakers like I do, still have them set to small, but have the crossover down at 40 Hertz. I have that big honk in center channel, the ginormous, uh, Klipsch RP450C, that I have set up as small, and it's, it can go down to like 50 hertz, so I have the crossover set to 60. You kinda don't want certain things full range just because um, you want the sub to take care of stuff, and you want the sub on LFE set at 120. Those are like the average or the regular kind of settings. Obviously, for your room, it's gonna be different, so always kinda play around with things. Dive into your AVR, crossover settings, 
and make a few changes, then watch something. Then make a few more changes, watch that same thing again, and see which setting works for your setup and your room and that particular movie. Now things will change movie to movie, but you can kind of get a good standardization that will work for all your movies. The current crossover setup I've got going on works really well and I'm happy with it. So that's pretty much it for today's video. If you liked it, go ahead, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad and I'll see you next time. <laughs>